Hey Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castlin. Recently you joined me and we shaped this piece of poplar up to hollow it and make a decorative piece out of it. We shaped it, we put it on a glue plate, wait, wait, we drilled a hole in it. We put it on a glue block, we shaped the back, we shaped the front, we've got it running, it's true, it's registered, it's ready for hollowing. This time, we're going to go ahead and use a gizmo. That's what it's called, the gizmo. All you got to do, you know it, watch. Now, if you've ever seen me hollow before, you do know part of the drill is I drill. I drill the center part out because I don't like working to a crossover point. So, I'm, I know the depth of my cutter, my drill. I'm going to go right down through the center here. And I am going to take the center out. Now, when I hollow, I will not be fighting the crossover for that center. But getting in here right now with any type of tool is going to be a little awkward. So I'm going to open this up a little bit. And yes, I could have just done this with a little force and a bit to the right depth. Please allow me to take you on a quick tour to Gizmo. This is a post that slips onto the bed. It adjusts to match the height of your lathe. Then you've got three arms, three articulating arms. Gizmo, gizmo, gizmo. All right. Then you have a tool holder right here. It holds multiple tools, different sizes, different shapes, different purposes. And I've got at least five tools that will fit in this post to cut. I really like the one we currently have in there. We'll show you more in a moment. Look up. You see that bar up here? This, this is the laser. This will locate the tip of this cutter. Let me show you more. This is the business end of the cutter. Now JT Tools makes this rig and they've made it as versatile as I, as I really think I would want it. If I break that loose I can rotate this head to get the degree of aggression I want on the cutter. Okay? That's the first adjustment. That adjusts the cutter to the attitude that I want for cutting. Then this moves it to where I want it at for getting inside the piece. And if you wonder how I'm going to get three inches back from that hole I have, JT Tools provides extra lengths so I can link this thing up and push back in there. But I don't want to start with all the extra links because I don't want the vibration from them. So I start with the short reach until it runs out and then I'll add a link, add a link, add a link. And to keep track of where my cutter is, well, boy, brand new sockets, brand new uh, wrenches, all fit up so nice you got to love it. Keep an idea where my cutter is. I turn on, pardon my reach, I turn on my laser. You see the white dot? And I bring my laser to where my cutter is. And I, I if we're roughing in, I'm going to run it about the center of the cutter, right on the cutter. I don't need to lead this, so I'm going to be right on the cutter. That way when I go inside, I'll be able to see where my piece is running in, rel in relationship to the 
to the uh, to the shape. So that's what we're talking about. This cutter will get aggressive as I want it. I can drive it where I need it to. I can articulate it to get around and get under a lid or around the bottom of a piece. Whatever shape you want, it's going to get in there. All I got to do now is hollow. Stand by. I'm going to do my best to keep you in the right place at the right time while I do this. But I can tell you, the camera and the laser are conflicting, so we're going to see what works out. Okay? To do this, we're going to go in reverse because I'm on that side. And we're going to crank it up to about five or 600 RPMs just to get started. you think we should get a little more aggressive? Not really. You'll get a catch early on until you get all the insides homogenous. If you feel like you're getting a scraping, it's because you picked up a piece of trash on a cutter and it's no longer cutting, it's just riding. I just added another link here at the cutting bar. We were directly to the bar. I added a link that is a one inch link. And that allowed me to bring the piece, the cutter, further up underneath this head and get further back in there. I'm going to take it about um, a half an inch to an inch at a time, changing links. That way I don't pick up any vibration I don't need, and I can still get through this fairly small hole. All right? Now, my red dot is right on that rim. I can look at that monitor back there and I can see my dot runner on the outside. Now if it's not convenient for you to be watching over there, you need to be watching over here. You'll be running in forward, turn your cutter around so you can see it. But the way I've got my camera set up, I can go ahead and watch this. Nifty, huh? As I'm ready to continue on, I have now set a little bit of a 90 on this, reach by you here. I've got the laser miss set, so I'm going to relocate the laser. To be right off the cutting tip. about center that's going to give me just about the tip 
now I can go in here and start clearing out some more of this bottom wood that's way down on this corner and get that out the way. This, this corner is going to be the hardest part to get to. The vibration here is because I've got the offset on it now, number one. And number two, I'll let this set overnight and the wood moved a little. going to run out of cutting tip which means I got to add a link or move something. Now with straightening the knuckle out and everything else I'm doing really good up in here. As far as I can de de my, put my finger in it's all really nice except right underneath this lid and I left some of that thick right now it's not going to move or wobble but I was pushing against this so I didn't want to thin this out too much, but now I want to come back, reset the knuckle, probably take the link off, reset the knuckle real close so I can go right around that corner and pass right down the shoulder there and clean that up, make that nice and smooth. Wood turners tend to stick their fingers in to feel the inside. Normal people don't. They just appreciate that it's a beautiful piece of wood. It's got great grain, great coloring, great shape and it's some nice turning and that's the people you want to make happy if you're out to make another wood turner happy you're out for disappointment because you can hand any somebody any kind of a piece as beautiful as you think it is and say what do you think of it and they'll often ha be able to come up with a negative comment so, the problem I have with galleries at clubs Sometimes the gallery people believe it's their job to find something wrong. When actually it's just their job to critique the piece. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Oh, oh, I know what you're saying. Hey, Cap, didn't you offer free plans for an articulating arm called the Steel Snake? Yeah, I'll send you plans on how to build a Steel Snake. But because I can't come up with the right bearing combination to put it together, it doesn't work nearly as smooth as this. But it still works, and it's still a low-cost alternative to hollowing pieces. So if you're interested, just send me an email to, let's do this address, at a castle on a cox net. Tell me you want the plans for the steel snake. I'll send them to you. You need to get some one inch solid stock though. Make it out of tube, it's going to get a little vibration. But you can get that a local steel supplier. You can get enough to make one for you, one for that guy, and one for that. And remember that mooch that never pays? Well, you can make one for him too. In 2006 or 2007, here at my shop, my little bitty hole in the wall shop, we made 25 one Saturday. Yeah. For all the guys in the club. Everybody that wanted one paid $25 for materials and they got a steel snake. That's a club event. What I'm going to do now is with a straight tool. Clean up the bottom. Because that's what you can look at and see when you look into the piece. But, oh, yeah, that feels nice. I don't have any major ridges that I can feel in the entire piece and I have it 
pretty hollow. Now, the next step would be to re-true this edge because I have never, I have, I have not trued it up. I've stayed away from it for the purpose that I knew I would be beating on it with the tools, and I want to have it true. So when I use it to take the foot off, to, to rework the foot in a few minutes, it is, it gives a true effect. And then while I still have it in this direction where I'm looking at this piece, I'll probably sand this to about a 400 right now, and then I'll protect it when I flip it around. Let me give you a what if, because this is sometimes important. What if I beat that up so bad that it was going to get large and distract, detract from the look? What would I do? Well, I'd cut an insert and put an insert in there. I could cut a blackwood insert, put it in there, and put it with a hole in the center of it. And I can do that long after I take this piece off. I just want to be sure I got a good, clean footing or setting for it, and I've got a good, a little bit of a flat up here on the top for it to sit to. Or I can cup the bottom of that insert to make it look good when it sits on here. So there's always a way around it. Just work it out before you get there. Plan, what's that say? Plan ahead? I'm going to make that a saying. I'm about to turn the piece around. I'm going to use a one way with profile jaws on it. These are the number one specket jaws. Okay. This could mark the face of this piece, which I'm saying it to 320 right now. I want to pad it. This is a piece of shelf liner from Rubbermaid. It's available at your grocery store at Home Depot. I cut around, put a hole in the middle of it. I'll put that on, but that could still mark it. So now I have another strip of it. I'm going to stick it in the jaws, wrap it round. make a little protector for the jaws. Then when I put the piece on, I'm not touching wood to metal anywhere. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it. Right, you got to remember it opens to tighten it up. You got to remember it, I don't remember it. Uh, once you get it open enough to not move. Remember that? We're going to go back for that center again. We're going to bring up our, our tailstock, put just a little bit of bitty pressure on it, loosen up on this, and then snug it down again. Now, what that's going to do is put us back in positive re registration. See it? And hear it? Now a couple of things. I sanded the surface a few minutes ago with it going in one direction. In a minute I'm going to sand it going in another direction. That's going to help the sanding. I'm going to get this rid of this block and fix this foot. But when I fix the foot, I'm going to put another insert in it to where I can turn it around to stain it and put the super glue finish, oh yeah we're doing that, on this piece. So that's where we are now. Let me get you in a better position and we'll cut the bottom off. That's a drip of super glue. It dripped down when I was putting that face on and I missed it. I should have wiped it off, but it's going to be the hardest thing on this bottom. So I'm going to work on the hardest thing on the bottom right off the bat. that's gone and I can sand this for a good match. I want to fix the foot. That noise you hear is the super glue. It is the hardest thing on it.
Now I'm sure I've got that cleaned up nicely. I don't feel a transition. If I feel it, I got to get rid of it. I don't see a transition. Because fresh cut wood and sand it wood. I'm ready to take the foot off. This is critical and that if I muscle it off the wrong way I could jam it, pop it, and damage the piece because this is very thin on the bottom. So we're going to go at it with a good sharp D-way parting tool. I'm going to stroke a little edge on the end of it. Got it? nice and sharp. I'm going to cut this but I can't get you in a position to show you but I'm not going to cut it right at the piece. I'm going to cut a little bit back from it because then I can play with the width of it and keep it from jamming. So I know I got the center cut out of that block. All total, that's going to be about double the width of the tool. And I'm so close, I'm going to take the pressure off from the tailstock because I don't want to jam it. getting a vibration. Vibration says yes. I am moving. I was not tight enough. So we tighten up a little bit more. Better. Once I get that foot off, the glue block, now it's still a good usable glue block, I will true that face up, put it back in a box, and it'll be ready for the next time I chuck something up. Right now I'm going to remove a little bit of this rough in the middle, and then I'm going to put a soft touch up to it to hold it while I finish up the shaping. Why? Because I don't want to break it. Okay, time passed. I cannot find the clip that I shot when I finished this piece. It showed that I put a foot on it and I turned it around and I'm ready to stain it, seal it, and put a CA finish on it. So that's what I said in the clip. Look, here's the foot. It's ready to turn around and when you join me again and the next one, number 194, I'm going to show you how to finish this piece off. Now that I've said that, let's get out of here because I'm done making shavings, at least for today. See you soon.